Hi, my name is John from Final Cut Pro Classes, and today's tutorial is going to be about how to start a project in Final Cut Pro. And a project is basically a timeline or a sequence, how we used to call it. So let's get started to show you how important it is to know your format of your project, to know your format of your clips, so that your edit goes smoothly and looks good. So first of all, I have some clips here from diving footage, and I want to start a a sequence or a project with this footage. I'm going to cut the whole thing with just this footage here and it has it comes from one camera so the format's the same. If I make a new project and I call it diving and I want this to go into the diving event so I can find it again and right now it's set at automatic so basically it's saying that the first clip you put into that timeline will set the properties of that timeline, which is important to know because you want to know what format your clips are and what format you're cutting in. I usually want to cut in the native format of my clips because it renders faster and when I output, I can output at any format, but it's better to have the original quality. If I hit this Use Custom Settings button, Final Cut wants me to figure out what the frame rate is and what the frame size is. And that can be a hassle, and it's easy for me just to have Final Cut do it automatically if it can. So I'm going to go back to Use Automatic Settings, I'm going to hit OK. So now I have this project that came up. So if I drop one of these clips into that timeline, it's going to set that timeline for the settings of the clip itself. So it's at its native format. It'll play smoothly, it won't have to render because it's not compressing it into the timeline. And if I click on the clip itself, I can see in the info button here that it's 1920 by 1080, 2997 frame rate. But now that has been set in this timeline because I already dropped the first clip in. So let's say for instance that I go to some green screen footage and if I click it, I see that this footage is much bigger. It's 3840 by 2180 at 25 frames a second. Totally different. But if I drop it in, it's going to compress this clip down to the 1920 by 1080 sequence settings. So basically what it did was, this is now 1920 by 1080. The aspect ratio is the same, but I can blow this up much bigger um, because it's, it's really small in the frame, so and I won't distort it. So that's one of the advantages, say you shoot 4K and you want to use it to blow up and down uh, in a smaller sequence, you can use a 1920 by 1080 sequence and use 4K, and that way you have the possibility to zoom in and zoom out without pixelating your picture. So let me erase this here again. So now I have nothing in the sequence again. So. Being that it's going to be the first clip, if I drop this into the sequence, Apple sees it's 3840 and it's 25 frames a second. So it's going to make the sequence to that setting. And say now I drop in a smaller clip that's 1920 by 1080 and I drop that in. So basically now this clip is going to be stretched out to fit that sequence. So it's already stretched out more than twice. You don't really notice it on your Final Cut window, but you will notice it on the output. So basically, because your sequence settings is set at 3840 and you just dropped a, a clip that's 1920 by 1080 in there, it stretched out that clip to fit that frame size. So you have to be careful about that. So for instance, if I was starting a, a project, let's say I start a new project. So I go File, New, Project. And I want to call it Statue of Liberty. And I want it to go in my statue events. Okay, I'm going to leave it set to do automatic settings. So it chooses the settings itself. Uh, if, remember, if I open up custom, it wants me to do it by myself, which I don't want to. And I want to say use automatic. And I say OK. So it's on automatic settings, and I go to the Statue of Liberty footage. Right now, if I click on that project file, it's still set at the last 4K project settings. But as soon as I drop in the first clip of this new footage, it changes that project setting to 1440 by 1080 and everything after this clip will be at that project setting. So for instance, if I make this a little bit smaller 
and now I go to another format, let's say Instacam, which is a, a vertical video. And then I drop that in. So now that squeezed it into that frame format, but you see that you have the black bars left and right. And so basically if I, if I output this, you will see these black bars here. Okay, because it squeezed it down in, into that format. Okay, so everything will be at the 1440. Uh, if I click on the uh, the project again, everything will be at 1440, 1080 frames. So it's going to fit it either left and right or up and down into that frame. So let's erase this for a second. And so now I, I still have this empty project. So I'm just going to randomly go to a picture here and I'm going to drop this in. Now it's a picture, so it doesn't really recognize pictures frame frame size. So I have to sort of tell it what this picture is. And I can see it's 853 by 853 at 59. It wants to put it at 59.9 frames a second. So I can go to custom. Right now it's going to make it at 1080 by 1080. Okay. So maybe I don't want that. Um, I want it to be at the picture size. So I'm going to undo that. And I'm going to drop it in again. And this time I'll say, make it 853 by 853. So I'll go to custom and I'll say, and it sees it already, 853, 853, and I hit okay. So now that's gonna be the exact frame size of that picture. But remember, everything else that you drop into it will squeeze into this 853 by 853 frame size. So if I go to the diving footage and I drop it in, you'll see that it fits it in, but you'll have black bars on top and bottom because it, it fit it in from the sides, but it's not gonna stretch it out. But it'll just leave you the black bars, either top, bottom, left or right. So let me take that out. So if I was to cut a sequence where I'm using different formats, I would have to decide what is gonna be the main format of my sequence. If I wanted to do some diving footage, but I wanted to say some different footage to be my intro, but I only have one or two shots of this and the rest of my timeline is gonna be the diving footage. I wouldn't drop this in because it's gonna change my frame size and my sequence settings to 1440 by 1080 when my diving footage is actually 1920 by 1080. So if I dropped in diving footage now, it would compress everything to the smaller format, which I don't want. So basically what I would do is I would take my diving footage to make it easy and drop that in first, then take the statue pics, which are a smaller format, and I would put that as my intro. But my sequence settings are set correctly for 1920 by 1080 because the first shot I put in was the diving footage. And if I look at my project and I go to info, I can see that it's 1920 by 1080. Now a good way to see your clips and what format they're in. If you go to the list view, okay, you have these columns here, and you can pull up the frame rate and the um, frame size uh, in your columns. If it's not there, you can just right click and then just check it on. Here's frame size and here's video frame rate, and just put that check mark on and you'll have them. And you can move these columns over to where you can see them at once. So I can see that my statue footage is 1440 by 1080. It's a 29.97. I can see my Instacam footage is 1080 by 1920 at 25 frames a second. My green screen is 3840 by 2160 at 25 frames a second. My diving footage is 1920 by 1080 at 29.97. And I have some different formats here that are different sizes. So it's really important to know what your format is, what you want to cut in. So let's say you have some 4K footage and you want to be able to zoom in without pixelating it and you know your final format is going to be 1920 by 1080. You can make your project in 1920 by 1080 and just say, let's say um, interview. Say you shot your interview in 4K so you're able to zoom in on people without pixelating. And I'm going to put this in green screen and I'm gonna say use custom settings this time. So I'm gonna say video 1080 HD, 1920 by 1080, and I'm gonna change the frame rate to 25 because that's what my frame rate is on the green screen, and I'm gonna say okay. 
So now I can drop this green screen down in the timeline and it's going to compress it down to 1920 by 1080. But that gives me the advantage of being able to blow it up quite big without pixelating. So I can zoom in and zoom out, which we'll get into in another tutorial. But it's important to know that what the format is and, and what you can do with it and what the advantages are of cutting in the different formats. And you know, if you made a mistake and you're cutting in the wrong format, it's not so bad. You can always change the format of a project here if you go to the project itself. So here I'm going to go find this interview project. I'm going to say um, reveal project in browser. So here's this interview project here. If I click it, and I see it's 1920 by 1080, but I don't want it 1920 by 1080, maybe I want it 4K. I can hit modify, okay? And then I can drop the menu down and I can make it whatever I want. I can make it 4K, which this footage is, and there's the right frame rate, and I hit okay, and there it makes it 4K. So now if I was zooming in on it, it would pixelate a little bit because I'm in 4K with the frame size of the timeline and I'm blowing it up bigger than the frame size. So the easiest thing is to leave it on automatic settings when you're cutting in one format so that it matches those settings and you cut in the native format. But a lot of times you might want to cut in a different format than your footage. Like if you're cutting in 1920, you want to use 4K so you're able to blow things up and down and you have mixed clips and you have to decide which format you're going to choose for your clips. Um, if you have 100 clips in 1920 by 1080 and only 10 clips 720 by 480, I would probably pick the 1920 format because that's what most of my clips are in. I hope this explains a little bit about how to start a project and choosing the right format in Final Cut Pro. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Subscribe or like if you want, and I'll have another tutorial up soon. Thank you.